All right. Uh, now we should be good. All right, so for today, um, we're going to be going over the uh, some of the key differences between Asia and Japan. Um, that's kind of what all your writing was about, so it should be hopefully pretty familiar, but I'll just kind of outline um, what I thought was some of the most important stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to walk you through my expectations for that essay. Um, and in particular, I made some sample paragraphs and kind of highlighted where it demonstrates the different components of the structure. So hopefully it's kind of clear what exactly I'm looking for for each part of that essay. So any questions over what we're going to talk about today? Before I nope. Alrighty. There, oh, that's wrong. there we go. All right. So. Um, with China and Japan, part of the reason I wanted to end the imperialism unit with them is because I feel like they do a very good job of kind of highlighting the two different ways that you could handle imperialism during this time period and why one is more effective than the other. Um, so I tried to kind of break it down by the timeline of events with them, starting with like life before and then ending with like after, towards the end of imperialism, what it looked like for them. So with the two it is very similar up until a point. Like you'll note that in life before imperialism, both Japan and China were pretty just like anti everybody else. Like Japan had the rule about no trade whatsoever. Nobody allowed on the mainland. Like just don't come and talk to Japan at all. They don't need you. They're not about that. They were super isolationist. And while China wasn't as strict, they were pretty similar. You should have hopefully picked up from those uh, Opium Wars videos that they only allowed trade in one port. And nobody was allowed into the mainland still. So like just the most like textbook definition of slightly more lenient in that you can land in one place, but that's about it. And for both of them, the reason that imperialism comes to their shores is the same as everybody else that we've talked about because people want to make money. For China, it was that British wanted more tea uh, and they didn't know how to do it without highly addictive drugs. Uh, and for Japan, it was that America wanted to trade with them. It was a new market that they could try and sell to. Thank you for the annotation. I knew I forgot to remove something. I'm just going to real quick disable Oh, wait, that. wait. Could you see that? I, I sure could. Oh, okay. I did not think you could see that. I was just seeing if it worked. Uh, well, it shouldn't now, hopefully, if you want to give it a shot. Sorry. That's my bad. No, you're good. I'm impressed with how quickly you found it out. One of my other classes, it took them like 10 minutes before they realized they could draw on it. But anyway, getting back. So before and the start, very similar, right? Isolationist, nobody come here. Uh, initially start talking with Europe because more Europeans want to trade and they're very aggressive. Um, and then where they start to split, which would have the kind of the key difference and the key lesson about how to handle European imperialism was how they responded to it. Where on the Chinese side, they like super doubled down on their own tradition, right? Like the Opium War start because the emperor refused to trade with Europeans. He's like, I don't need your stuff. It's terrible. Yeah, rather than try and adapt, he outlawed opium. Rather than try and develop new technology or make reforms, the Empress Su Shi just did like half measures where she would sort of try and reform but not really and didn't embrace factories and so over and over uh they're just not really embracing the new world whereas japan does the exact opposite and they're like all right let's go like brand new society we're in uh where they open themselves to trade where they immediately hire tons of new people to come and teach them all the new western ways they develop new factories as an entire nation they get behind this idea of like all right let's go we need to move into the next future. And it's very much about this idea of like, how set in your ways are you? China adamantly believed that their society was superior to everybody else, even though it was very clear that it was not and refused to embrace that. Whereas Japan thought that they were, saw they were not, and then immediately turned it around and was like, okay, how do we get to the same level as everybody else? And you see the dramatic changes that that has in the end result where you know china has numerous rebellions uh they have the taiping rebellion the boxer rebellion repeated wars with europeans multiple opium wars 
And at the end, they're carved up where all different chunks of them are owned by different countries, and it'll stay that way until after World War II. Whereas Japan does the exact opposite. And by the time we're getting into World War I, they are on the same playing field as European powers. They actually help carve up China, despite the fact that they started at the same point. They just kind of blow past them. And that's kind of the lasting message about imperialism in general, is that the societies that survive the period of imperialism are the ones that embrace and try and adapt, whereas the ones that sort of refuse to do that or try to stick to their old traditions fall apart. You see that with China. You see that with the Ottomans. Uh, the one exception being Africa, in that Africa didn't really have an option. They were just immediately abused and never given an opportunity to grow. And so with that, are there any kind of questions about the lasting message of imperialism? We'll take the abject silence as a no. Uh, so we'll talk about addresses. So you guys should have hopefully by now looked through, or at least kind of glanced at the essay requirements for this particular topic. Um, I went ahead and copied them over to the left here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of sh show you examples of them using a different topic. I didn't want to straight up steal the topic from you guys because I don't really need people watching this and then just stealing whatever I write to use for their essay. But um, it should hopefully give you still the same sort of framework because it's pretty interchangeable. Like whatever the topic is doesn't really matter. You can still follow these same steps and model the same process and you'll get to the end result that I'm looking for. And you'll put together an essay that um, not only meets all my requirements, but is just a persuasive essay. And so I've just kind of broken each slide into a different section. And so we'll just get going with the introduction. Uh, the topic I'm going to be using for this is should cell phones be allowed in class? Again, that doesn't super matter though. So first and foremost, um, one of the recurring complaints I hear about these essays is that uh, I ask for five sentences for every paragraph. And a lot of people hit me with, well, how are you supposed to hit five sentences in an introduction, right? You're just like, this is what I'm talking about. All right, moving on. Uh, and my answer to that would be, that first highlighted bit, the attention getter, is the primary way you're going to meet these requirements. Um, and the reason I want to emphasize that is because this is pretty consistently an area that's lacking in the essays that I receive, and it's arguably one of the most important parts of the introduction. And so what I really want to drive home is that with these essays, the way you're going to show me that you've kind of learned uh, this material is that you're going to be able to explain it in depth. And the attention getter is your first opportunity to do that. Because when you write these, the best method is going to be to write them like your reader has never looked at anything having to do with imperialism whatsoever. And so when you're going to answer that overarching question, your guys is being, um, I believe it was, or the motives of imperialism, uh, you're going to need to put that into context. You're going to need to give some background examples. You need to create this sort of scene so your reader can understand, okay, this is the situation that we're in. Uh, and so in my example, I tried to show that by explaining the context surrounding cell phones today. So like if you read through it, when one thinks of the modern, it's hard not to think of the cell phone and in particular the smartphone. Since Apple released the first iPhone in 2007, the ability to have a tiny computer in one's pocket has had a transformative effect on society. Unfortunately, today's schools have chosen to turn away from the amazing utility that smartphones like the iPhone offer. So as you can see there, like very quickly lay the groundwork of like, hey, we all agree cell phones are a part of society, right? Like you give something easy that people can connect to. Then from there, you transition to just a little bit of background information. The uh, idea that, you know, they've been around since 2007, just a brief history, and they've been really important. And then you immediately move into whatever the problem or the topic is that you need to address in your essay. So like right there, I outlined the problem. Unfortunately, today's schools have chosen to turn away from cell phones, turn away from the issue. So right there, in just three sentences, you know, okay, we're talking about cell phones, um, we're talking about modern cell phones and smartphones, and we're talking about the role in schools. And now from there, it leads very nicely into your thesis statement. Uh, where you get to express your opinion. And I just follow that right up where this cannot be seen as anything other than a massive mistake. So like right there, identify the problem, 
and then provide your take, your solution. So like for you guys, for the introduction, since yours is what motivates imperialism, you can just present it as the same sort of deal. When talking about imperialism, there are numerous different motives that people have to discuss. However, I think that the most significant motive is economics or military. You right there have presented the problem, your opinion. Uh, and that's where the majority of your essay introduction should come from. Your attention getter really should be about three sentences long because it's you're building this context. Uh, you get your fourth from your thesis statement and then your fifth and your last sentence should always be the listing of the main reasons for why you should support a particular topic. I forgot to change this from the last class but the idea being that is why should the United States or why you should support the belief that economics causes imperialism and you need to list them out in the way that you're gonna go through them in your uh, essay. And that's super important because it creates structure. And a lot of this is about creating a nice structure, a flow to your argument that your reader can follow. And you can hopefully see that in the example where uh, my last sentence is, were schools to allow smartphones in class, it would allow teachers to better include the entire class in lessons. So boom, right there, one reason. Facilitate more research-based activities, a second reason, and allow teachers to help students to be more responsible digital citizens, third reason. And they can be as laundry list as that, like it's fine. You don't need to give them fancy explanations. You don't need to go into detail. It's literally just about saying, these are my three topics. So any questions about the introduction and what I'm looking for? No, sir. Alrighty, so then body paragraph. Oh, we're just going all kinds of wrong directions. All right. Uh, so same sort of deal um, with minimum sentences. Again, a lot of this is easy to hit as long as you're being very detailed in your explanation. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, so for each of the body paragraphs, again, they should be going in order of however you presented your arguments. So since the first one I presented in my example was that um, cell phones allow for better student involvement, that is what this body paragraph is about because it's the first one I'm discussing. And in all of your body paragraphs, you generally want to have some sort of transition. And then in the first sentence or second sentence, restate the topic. So it's very clear what you're supposed to be talking about. And again, try to demonstrate that with mine where I go, as most studies would likely attest, for better or worse, cell phones have become deeply ingrained within the culture of today's students. So introducing my topic, just getting a nice transition from the first paragraph and then as such it would only be logical that teachers work to utilize that within the classroom as a means of student engagement so boom right there just restating in a slightly different way that this argument is going to be this paragraph is going to be about getting students involved in the classroom through the use of cell phones uh, it's important that you paraphrase your own argument you don't want to uh, just carbon copy it from that first paragraph, otherwise you risk being repetitive, but you don't need to go into much more detail than you do in that first paragraph. Uh, from there, this is where the body paragraphs kind of tend to break down. So these next three, the provides a clear explanation of how the reason does or does not justify the thesis, it provides a specific supporting detail and clearly explains. This is where a lot of body paragraphs I see tend to fall apart. Uh, you guys are very good at including two out of the three, but not all three, so like either You'll explain your thinking behind your reason and you'll provide a document, but you won't explain it. Or you'll explain your reasoning and you'll go into a lot of detail about your reasoning, but you'll never explain what real world facts support your opinion. And that's important. Uh, and so that's kind of how you want to structure it is introduce the topic and the next sentence, expand and explain your reasoning more so what your thinking is and then support that with a hard fact or an example from history itself so like in mine my initial idea is that it increases involvement i then explain websites like kahoot and quizlet are easily accessible and allow teachers to create games out of normally boring topics so there is how it creates engagement it makes it more interesting by turning it into a game next i need to provide proof that that claim is correct and so my evidence is this type of competition can be incredibly motivating. For example, according to document one, a 2016 psychological study indicated that displaying points on the screen directly increased student motivation for the given assignment. So that's my hard fact, is a psych study from 2016. 
Uh, and this is where it's important to include the document because the idea is that as a reader, if I want to go and confirm that you didn't just make this fact up, I could now go look at document number one and I would read through it and I would say, oh, okay, that is in fact about a psych study and it does say what you are claiming. For you guys, um, your citation would just look like worksheet number one or document number one uh, because you guys have documents. So same sort of deal. You just need, to, so if it's like an interview with a person, you could say, according to document number one, so-and-so stated that um, the only reason Britain went to South Africa is because they wanted gold. Then if you were saying that economics was a motivator, that would be your proof because there is a dude outright saying they went for gold. Uh, and then lastly, you just need to make sure you link it back to that overarching statement. So again, that progress is, I say it increases involvement. The involvement is increased because it creates gains. The proof that gains increase involvement is from this psych study. And then you have to explain why your reasoning is so important. So in mine, it's that without cell phones, this sort of gamification would not be possible. To achieve the same effect, teachers would need to develop a point and answer system that they could single-handedly regulate something that would inevitably simplify the game to a point where students would lose motivation. So again, you're linking it back to that overall topic. You've explained how cell phones increase motivation and then you've concluded it by saying that they're necessary because you can't do it without them. So you need to follow a similar process with your writing about imperialism where again, if you say, well, they went to uh, South Af Africa with gold and they wouldn't really have any other reason to go there because Britain has everything else that they need. They're only lacking in gold. There you link it back to, again, this is why it's such an important reason why it's worth discussing. Does all that kind of make sense? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes, it does. Okay. I, it was a lot there, I know. Um, but that, it's a very important that you follow that sort of step-by-step -step process. And then our last one, the conclusion. Again, one of those that I hear a lot where it's very hard to hit the five sentence minimum. And again, like the previous ones, it's about making sure you take the time to flesh out your arguments, not just kind of rushing past everything. And so uh, you can pretty easily transition to this one with just in conclusion. And then right again, immediately restating your thesis. So in conclusion, allowing cell phones within the classroom is simply the most logical progression of the educational best practice. Again, it's all about saying the th same thing, but using different words to say it so you don't sound repetitive. Uh, and then you want to restate and summarize at least two of your main arguments, your main reasons. So two of those body paragraphs, if you wanna do all three, that's fine. That'll help you hit the sentence minimum. I'm only requiring two, but it's mostly about emphasizing your main points. So this is again the same idea where you want to say something similar to what you said in your body paragraphs, but use some different words to say it. Use a different example um, to refresh it in your reader's mind, but also show that you understand the depth of the topic. And so like in my example, much like how modern medicine could not exist without the invention of antibiotics, many effective educational methods like who would simply not be doable without the use of cellular devices within the classroom. So right there, restating this idea that uh, getting involvement comes from the Kahoot, which needs cellular devices. Uh, I didn't make any sort of medical comparison in the body paragraph, so it's a little new, but the core argument is the same. And then not only that, but to completely remove cell phones from the classroom would deprive students of important growth opportunities, setting them up for greater issues with future online interactions. Again, that was my third statement phrased differently. If you look back at that introduction, my third reason was that we need to have cell phones so that teachers can help you guys learn how to be responsible digital citizens. Saying the same thing, just a little different. Uh, and then from there, you just finish up whatever missing sentences you have by finding some sort of concise conclusion, tying it all together, making some sort of final statement, one last appeal to emotion as to why you are correct. And you see that with mine with cell phones are as much a part of our society as cars or planes and should ultimately be treated as such. The field of education must move forward just as the rest of society does. And so you get that sense of finality. And then it's also that one last comparison that maybe you didn't mention anywhere else in your uh, essay, but it really helps drive home that final point. So for you guys with talks about motives, maybe you take this opportunity to 
very briefly acknowledge that, yeah, there are some other important motives, but at the end of the day, economics just trumps all of them. And then you just finish it from there. there. Go Trump. There you go. So any questions about that structure, what you're looking for? Nope. Friday, Destiny, you both good? Yep, good. Yeah, I'm good. All righty. Uh, then I forget when exactly I said your guys is due. Is it Tuesday next week? Uh, you're going to have to ask uh, either Roddy or Destiny. No, if you're sure on that one. Okay. It's later next week. I'm not super worried about it, but um, that's all you need to be working on. Um, if at any point while Thursday. you're Thursday. Thursday? All right, cool. So you guys have plenty of time. Oh, uh, yeah. For while you're working on these, if at any point you're confused or like you have a draft that's done and it's not Thursday and you want me to read over it, feel free to email it to me. I will gladly read through them, uh, give you any sort of comments on areas that I think can improve, uh, and then send that back to you. But otherwise, that'll, that'll be your week next week is working on this essay. Sweet. Yeah, an easy week. Oh. All right. Well, that's all I got. Um, thank you for showing up. I appreciate that you guys consistently do that. And have a wonderful rest of your weekend. You too, Mr. Mays. Thank you. See ya.